Hi everyone, it's Jen on the go. Welcome or welcome back to this channel. I am currently filming from a little town in Florida called Celebration. Quick fun fact, this is the town that Disney built in 1996. Disney built this town as an experiment called New Urbanism. While Disney doesn't own this town anymore, there are still little Disney touches everywhere. I thought this would be a really fun place to film so that you could see a little bit of Celebration because it's so charming and cute. In today's video, we are talking about the uncertainty of working in the gig economy, yet so many people are ditching their W-2s and joining these gig apps at record numbers. The vicious cycle of chasing these orders that are actually worth it is daunting and anxiety provoking. It is so stressful constantly worrying about our next paycheck. If you are interested in this topic and would also like to see a little bit of celebration, stay with me because we're starting right now. Okay, let's go. I came across a really interesting article titled How the Gig Economy Benefits People with Mental Health Concerns. In this article, they stated one of the greatest benefits in joining the gig economy is the ability to reduce your daily stress levels. No commute, no workplace politics, no manager breathing down your neck. Also a boost in self-esteem because you're not just wasting your time lining the pockets of your employer. While this is true, working on these gig apps means you don't have to bear a boss and you can turn on and off these apps at your leisure, we can be certain that there is no security or stability working in the gig economy. The chase is real and such an emotional struggle for so many who do rely on these gig apps. There are no protections, no benefits, no retirement plans, not to mention an elevated risk for accidents. This isn't the case for W-2 employees. They know exactly how much they're going to get paid and when. In a 2022 study done by North One, they uncovered some telling statistics about the gig economy in a post-pandemic world. According to these statistics, no surprise, transportation and food delivery are among the most popular gigs. And this is because these gigs are the lowest hanging fruit and the easiest to access. The gig economy is definitely growing and statistics research predicts that 60% of the US workforce will be working on a freelance contract basis by 2020. Statistics also show that 70% of gig workers worldwide are under the age of 35 and about 20% are under the age of 20. There is such an oversaturation of gig workers who are chasing the false promise of a better life of financial independence. Working in the gig economy post pandemic is survival of the fittest. If you want to make money with these gig apps, you have to be aggressive and juggle several apps. I was recently at my local Publix shopping for myself and couldn't help notice another Instacart shopper who had a huge cart full of groceries. As she was checking out, two gentlemen were there and helped her load her groceries into her car. They had no clue that I was watching them intently. This shopper was parked right next to my car so I could see everything that was going on. As she was pulling away, I saw these men swipe on another Instacart batch and head right back into the store. Each one was holding two phones. In the meantime, I logged onto my Instacart app and there were zero batches available to me in that same parking lot. It definitely makes you wonder, right? I am not accusing or confirming that this was a bot user, but I am confirming that they were working together with a pretty clever and organized system that looked suspect. Gigging for Instacart is a dog eats dog environment. I'm not saying that every gig app is bad, but they are oversaturated with people who are just trying to get ahead and for so many to make ends meet. People who are working on these gig apps spend so much of their time in their cars, sitting idle waiting for orders. A brand new Instacart shopper just posted on Facebook a batch order she received for $43. It was for a triple batch. She was so excited that she made $43 and $43 is a great paying batch and making $43 is awesome. But the problem is she also showed her active time working, which was five hours, resulting in her hourly rate of $8.60. This is is nothing to boast about. It is working for under minimum wage. All of this dead time wasted spent looking for orders we have to count too. And this is time that could be spent doing something else that actually provides fiscal value. Unfortunately though, the hours wasted in our cars working for well under minimum wage is happening on repeat for way too many gig workers who are settling for these menial wages. Every day it's the same thing and the chase begins all over again. It's a race to the bottom. 
Gig economy incomes are shrinking, maybe not in every market just yet. More and more people are rushing to these apps. There is a lot of supply which outweighs the demand. I read another interesting article and I believe it was in Time. And in this article, it stated, when gig work is the only pie that's available to millions of people, sharing it means that some don't even get the crumbs. May I ask an honest question? Doesn't this uncertainty actually result in financial and psychological stress versus the stress of W-2 work? Do you think gig workers who specifically work on these apps full-time are at an economic disadvantage compared to regular salaried W-2 employees? How is relying on on-demand apps being at the beck and call of these apps to make ends meet better? High stress is not having a sure thing income or a safety net. I read this recently and it's so true. For gig workers, the most basic financial guarantees, job security, employment rights, or structure around work are a growing source of stress, physical and mental ill health. Gig workers are carrying all the risk while these tech companies get rich off the profits. Add to this, it's harder for people with insecure work and income to get mortgages and loans and therefore plan for the future. I am talking about this topic today because people still ask me if they should do Instacart full time. I can't answer that question for anyone, but all you have to do is look at the big picture and long-term benefits and measure your own financial risk versus reward. I also observe that so many gig workers get pretty defensive when others challenge them to look beyond these gig apps, to know their worth, to set their sights higher, to earn more. The gig economy is largely based on exploitation, luring people in with, do you want to be your own boss? The reality is far less rosy. Are gig workers really their own boss? When there's an algorithm in control, the algorithm determines what you're offered next, not you. These gig apps are taking advantage of people's desperation and it's getting worse and worse. And competing with more and more people for lower paying gigs is becoming the new normal. Please don't enable these apps and justify taking the scraps. You are worth so much more than that. These gig apps are great for supplemental income or to be used as a side hustle. Most people do need a side hustle, including me. But even your side hustle, no matter what it is, should be financially worth it. There are no guarantees working on any of these gig apps. And working on these gig apps full time is a gamble. And this gamble might be worth the risk for you. What do you value more, flexibility or stability? For me, it's definitely stability. Please let all of us know in the comment section below if you think working in the gig economy full-time reduces your stress level or is it the polar opposite and instead induces stress. This topic is always a debate, but that's okay as long as it's a healthy debate. I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit of the town of celebration because I sure enjoyed walking through it with you. I appreciate all of you watching and I appreciate all of you. I hope all of you are doing well. Please take care and I will see you in the next video.